This is section 6.1, which is vectors in a plane. We're going to talk about two-dimensional vectors, vector operations, unit vectors, direction angles, and applications. So a vector is a directed line segment. So you can see here if we have the point AB, we write a vector using not curved brackets, but kind of like that. So if this was the point 3, 4, and it started at 0, 0, we would write that as vector 3, 4. So a two-dimensional vector is an ordered pair of real numbers, component form, which is what we just talked about, um, as a, b. The numbers a and b are the components of the vector v. The standard representation of the vector AB is the arrow from the origin to the point AB. The magnitude is the length of the arrow, and then you have the direction of V. In which, that is which the direction in which the arrow is pointing. So the vector 0, um, the 0 vector, has 0 length and no direction. So you can see here, you have two different vectors, RS and OP, and they are, they have the, they are equivalent vectors, even though they don't have the same um, initial point and terminal point, you can see that if you were to move RS onto OP, they would be the same vector. So um, we'll talk about in a second how you find the components of the vector if it's not in standard form and that is the head minus tail rule. So if you have an initial point and a terminal point, you basically you subtract the x values and subtract the y values to find the component form of the vector. The magnitude of the vector is how long the vector is, and that can be found, this should look familiar, like the distance formula, because that's what it is. Um, so basically, basically, it's the distance formula between the two points that you have. Um, the nice part about a vector and, and component form of a vector is you can just take each component of the vector, square it, add them together, and take the square root. So that's what's down here. Okay? So an example, find the magnitude of vector v represented by pq, where p is 3, negative 4, and q is 5, 2. So what we're going to do is we are finding the magnitude. So the notation for magnitude kind of looks like absolute value signs. Um, so we're going to take the square root of 5 minus 3 squared. Those are my x's. Plus 2 minus negative 4 squared. So that's going to give me the square root of 40 which we can simplify into 2 squared to 10. That would be the magnitude of vector PQ. And Okay, so vector addition and scalar multiplication. So if you have vector U, which is U1, U2, and vector V, V1, V2, um, the sum, so if you want to find u plus v, you just take the sum of each of their components. So you can see it's u1 plus v1 and u2 plus v2. And then scalar multiplication, so if you have a number that you're multiplying a vector by, um, you're basically just taking that scalar and multiplying each component. So you would have k times u1, k times u2. So just to kind of visualize, these are going to be bad sketches, but so let's say, so when you're finding vector addition, what that's going to look like is, let's say I have, this is vector u, and then I want to add onto it vector v. So this resulting vector would be u plus v. And technically, you can add negative values, too. So if this is vector u, this would be vector negative u. So you could do u plus negative v, and so on. 
okay, where we're talking about multiplying by a scalar. So if this is u, this would be 2u. So you're multiplying by, so you're scaling the vector to a larger or smaller um, vector resulting from that. Okay, so performing vector operations. So if we have u is 2, negative 1, and v is 5, 3, we're going to find 3u plus v. So first of all, 3u would be 3 times 2, which is 6, and 3 times negative 1, which would be negative 3. So then 3u plus v would just be, we'd take 6 plus 5, and negative 3 plus 3, oops, <laughs> mixing my notations there. So this would be 11, 0. So unit vectors. A unit vector is a vector that is has a magnitude of 1 in the direction of whatever vector you're talking about. So the way that we find the unit vector is you take your vector v and you divide it by the magnitude of v and that will give you the unit, unit vector in the direction of v. So for example, find a unit vector in the direction of 2, negative 3. So first we need to find the magnitude. So the magnitude would be 2 squared plus negative 3 squared which is, I don't need to look in my, this would be square root of 13. So then to find our unit vector, we would take v divided by the magnitude of v. So that would be, oops, 2, <laughs> having troubles here, negative 3 over square root of 13. So basically we're just, it's kind of like scalar multiplication, um, but it'd be scalar division in this case. So it'd be 2 over square root of 13, negative 3 over square root of 13. So what that would be, it's really hard to kind of visualize, but what that means is if I were to graph this vector, it would be a vector that has a length of 1 in the direction of 2, negative 3. Okay, so standard unit vectors. So the, another way other than component form to write it is with i and j. So if I have vector v that is 2, 3, I could also write this as 2i plus 3j. So that is a different way um, using, using our two... Um, standard unit ver vectors, which are i and j, that's another way that we can write it. So knowing that these two things mean the same thing, one is component form, one is standard form. Okay, resolving the vector. So if you have an angle that you know the vector is, but you don't know the components, you can find the components um, by taking the magnitude times cosine of theta and the magnitude times sine of theta to find your um, x and y components of the vector. So for example, find the components of vector v with a direction angle of 120 degrees and magnitude 8. So this would be, we'll say our components are a, b, so this would be 8 cosine of 120 and 8 sine of 120 think back to that unit circle. So this would be 8 times negative 1 half and 8 times square root of 3 over 2. So if we simplify that, that would be negative 4 and this would be 4 square root of 3. So it's asking you to find the components. So A would be negative 4 and B would be 4 square root of 3. Okay, 
um, finding the direction angle of a vector. So it says let u equal negative 2, 3, and v equal negative 4, negative 1. Find the magnitude and direction angle of each vector. So if we start with u, we want to find the magnitude of u, which would be the square root of negative 2 squared plus 3 squared, so b squared of 13. Then to find the angle, so you can see on the graph here, we're finding angle alpha. Okay, we would say, okay, we know that the component of u for the x component is negative 2. And that would need to be the magnitude, which is 13, times cosine of alpha. So we can divide both sides by square root of 13, so we get negative 2 over square root of 13 equals cosine of alpha. Then we can take the inverse cosine of that to find out angle alpha, and we get 123.69 degrees. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for v. So I need to find the magnitude, which would be negative 4 squared plus negative 1 squared. So that would be the square root of 17. So that's our magnitude. So then again, the component of v, so we'll use the x component again. So it would be negative 4 equals the square root of 17 times cosine of beta. You can divide by square root of 17 equals cosine of beta. Do the inverse cosine, and I get that beta is equal to 194.5. 0, 4 degrees. Cosine is going to be nicer to use than sine because remember sine isn't going to help you find um, the obtuse angles like cosine does. So I would I would recommend using the x, x part of your um, component and using cosine. Okay and then the last thing is just to note real life application. So velocity is a good example of a vector because velocity has both a magnitude and a direction. So when we're talking about velocity, the speed um, is the magnitude, but then we also have a direction when we're talking about velocity where speed just gives a value. Velocity gives speed and a direction. So that would be a real life application of vectors. Okay, let me know if you have